Okay, so last night, Devin and I uh, were woken up by some commotion outside of the trailer. This is our bedroom right here. Uh, Dublin's over there. He started barking. We heard it. We we're like, what the heck is going on? So we kind of sit still. We're listening. We hear it. My heart is beating out of my chest. I don't know what the heck to do. I look out the window. I don't see anything. I look out this window, I make some noise when I do that, and I see something move, and I jump, my heart's still beating, and I'm freaking out. And so, when I do that, I look a little closer, and I see all of this. It's a good lesson in not leaving your trash out for the coyotes to get. Okay, the trailer is in tow. Because after two months of being on the road, going to Michigan and coming back to Dallas for the holidays, and then two months here, holidays, service issues, all of that, we're back on the road and we're headed west. Woo! Yeah. Where are we going? I don't really know. We don't know. Uh, Currently, the plan is to go straight to Arizona and then to Southern California, but we don't know how long we'll be in Arizona and then when we'll go to SoCal. Um, but what that means is it's just going to be two, or two to three overnight stops, just boondocking, maybe maybe do some harvest hosts um, along the way until we make it to somewhere in Arizona. This feels a lot like when we went to Michigan. We just got in the truck, we said we're going to Michigan. I had zero plans beyond that. That's exactly what we're doing right now. We are heading west, so we're going one of these directions. <laughs> well, this direction. This direction of the whole time. I mean, essentially, we're yeah. West right now. Yeah, we're on. So we're going we're this on direction west. for a lot of miles, and yeah. that's the plan. So that's the plan. We'll Let's... make it somewhere at some point, and that's kind of the fun of it. Yeah. Go west. Uh, find some good weather and, and and ultimately the goal is to just go find some really cool spots and see see things we haven't seen before. We did not know this was going to be cool. We just like the biscuit bar. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so we made it a couple hours uh, outside of Dallas. I kind of wanted to keep going, but we stopped and ate um, at the biscuit bar and then just felt like, you know, there's really no reason to rush. So let's just find a spot. We were gonna do a harvest host uh, at a meadery. We have never had mead before, but the entrance was this like real tight, small, muddy dirt road. And so we said, let's just go to the RV park that's close by. So here we are. So we're just gonna do a quick stopover, wake up early, hit the road again, and keep going west. So the best part about doing a quick overnighter is that I don't have to hook up anything if I don't want to. We've got enough power. Uh, we got our water pump fixed, so we've got water um, and obviously don't need to do sewer. So 
I don't have to, but we do want some fresh drinking water, so I am gonna hook up the water anyways, because I don't want to drink out of the fresh water pump. I don't know, is that a normal thing? Do you? Do you always avoid drinking out of it and just kind of use it for washing hands and dishes and things like that? Let us know, I don't know. But we're gonna do that because we want some good filtered water for, for the night and uh, whatnot. So we woke up early this morning to drive and um, we've been on the road for, I don't even know, five or six, seven hours, I'm not sure. We're just going as far as we can, but we have to stop every now and then for calls and whatnot. And sometimes, you know, you, you kind of just want to get there. But when you just stop and you're able to just kind of take it in, it just ends up being really cool because we're here, uh, almost to New Mexico, still in West Texas, but I mean, gosh, look at the scenery. Look at that. It's really nice to stop and pause and uh, just kind of take in your surroundings. That's your travel tip of the day. So full disclosure, we did not intend to stay in New Mexico. Our plan was to leave Dallas and kind of truck our way through until we got to Arizona, maybe spend a little time in Southern Arizona and then keep on going down to Southern California. Well, we were looking for a place to stay last night. We got on the Harvest Host staff, started searching around, found this vineyard. And um, by the way, we did not intend to stay here because we called and it was like one of those 24 hour in advance deals. So we just thought, okay, that's all right. So we booked a campground down the road and still just wanted to pop on over and have a taste of the wine and sort of have some of the little samplings that they had for food. Apparently it was pretty cool. So we came over here anyways, just for a bite, ended up meeting the owner who was super cool um, and actually invited us to come not only to stay the night, which was super gracious of him, definitely called 24 hours in advance, um, but allowed us to stay the night. And then also wanted to give us a tour of his hatch, of his, of his chili company. So you may be asking yourself, what does a vineyard and a chili company have in common? Great question, glad you asked. What a vineyard and a chili company have in common is this region here in New Mexico. So we're in Las Cruces and it's super close to Hatch. Um, so you're, I'm sure, especially if you live anywhere in the South, you know what a Hatch Green Chili is. Um, super popular, right? Well, it turns out that Hatch Green Chilies are just not ripe chilies and there's a special little window where those chilies are ripening up and turning red um, that is really like prime time for picking and producing chili um, so Randy the owner of this vineyard also started this chili company a while back um, he's in real estate and he would send his customers these nice canned chili jars and they started loving it and asking him for more so on so forth we'll share a bit of his story here but it turned into a full-blown company <laughs> so what about the wine how did he end up with this vineyard out here why is there a vineyard in this region um, in new mexico and what's the connection well not only is it the, around the hatch green chili capital but this this region in new mexico has a very old wine history so it's the oldest wine country um, in north america you don't have to contrary to popular belief you do not have to go should i wait for that plane Plane break. Contrary to popular belief, you do not have to drive all the way to California to get a good glass of wine. This region here in New Mexico is the oldest wine country in North America. Pretty cool. So um, when the Spanish people came up and sort of moved in to, uh, going north, they started here first, started planting grapes. So they also have um, the oldest grape here in this region. So we just wanted to kind of get, we wanted to experience this place and we wanted to share it with you all so that you would know that there's a little gem of a spot right here in New Mexico um, that you might want to stay as you are maybe just passing through like we were. But now, what are we gonna do, Jane? We're gonna go tour the Fresh Chili Company. Are you kidding me? So we're gonna go see how the chili is made and we cannot wait, so let's go.
know that we make this 24 hours a day. Wow. Seven days, six days a week. Okay. Um, and because uh, I don't want people working on Sunday. These are killer. I mean, um, fish or chicken mm. or vegetables on the grill. It really, and it's hatch, dried hatch chili mm. and other things. I, I love to, your labels too. It looks so nice. I have to kill you if I, I told play. you what else was in there. But oh, no. <laughs> it's on the back. Oh, you know what hominy is? Like a can of hominy? Mm -mm. No? No. Okay. I mean, I've heard of it, but yeah. I, I don't know what it is. Well, hominy is a, is a cheap uh, form of this whole thing. This okay. is really how you need to do it. Okay. okay. It's corn off of a cob. Okay. It's a special corn that's made with the soli. Okay. And we buy it from a farmer in northern New Mexico. Mm -hmm. And they dry it. And it's a process of putting it through lime, and then they dry it. Mm. And then you make a, a red chili or green chili stew out okay. of this. Okay. Tonight at the winery, they'll have red and salt. Okay. Kitchen, okay? Okay. okay. Which means there's going to be chili on the floor and mm -hmm. maybe even on the wall. Perfect. But before we leave today, there won't be. So it's cleaned up very well every day, but it's, it's a working day. Uh, this is Papa's, huh? So you can see what it looks like without mm -hmm. label. <laughs> it looks so good. Yeah. Isn't that oh, yeah. So you can see you have that water to it mm -hmm. to, to make it. Wow, nice. Thank you. It's kind of a great chip product. Like the powder, and then having that instead of just carrying around jars of salsa, but like always having good salsa on hand. That freeze dried is amazing. Yeah, like just imagine always having good salsa on hand, like re regardless of where you're traveling, yeah. having salsa. Not in this massive jar. Not in a big jar. Yeah. Just being able to whip it up like as much as you want. You know, I'm like open up the can and like. You guys still have yeah. your hair Okay, so turns out the grocery store is only 23 minutes. Three minutes away. On the scenic route. On the scenic route. Devin said, we're going to take the scenic route. Yeah. And I said, how long is it? And it's the shortest route, too. I'm not negative. Mm -mm, not at all. No. So, yeah. So we did. We ended up in a little town called Truth or Consequences, New Mexico on Elephant Butte Lake. And Say elephant. that a little slower. I think I don't think they heard what you said. What? Truth or consequences. Yes. It all kind of ran together. We're right? in a city called Truth or Consequences. Yeah. Which I think might initiate a game between us while we're here, actually, now that I think about it. What is that? Truth or consequence. <laughs> yeah, I think that's a good idea. Uh-huh. One in Rome. So, yep, Truth or Consequences, Elephant Butte, State Park. Really, really cool state park. Very pretty. Yep. It's clean. Super clean. Uh, I like all the gravel. Yeah. Yeah. Instead no, of like just... grass and dirt, there's like so much gravel. Yeah, it's really nice. I don't think grass can grow here. Hence the gravel. That's right. So, anyways, um, we'll see you at the grocery store. Yeah, we'll see you then. We're going to get some groceries, do some cooking, enjoy the views. Where are you going? This way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Got 
Got a grocery haul for the week. Hopefully, hopefully more than a week. Yeah, I think we did good. There's not any uh, restaurants or fast food, really, so. Actually, I think there are. I was Googling earlier. I think there's some, but we're trying to do the grocery thing. Yeah, we'll be responsible adults and actually cook for ourselves. This week. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. Okay, we found a trail close to our uh, campground, actually about 30 minutes away from where we're staying. But uh, it was either an hour long trail or a three or five hour long trail. So we chose this one. It's not gonna be the most adventurous, but I think it's gonna be good. Looks very pretty. Walking around out here like it's a place where people should be. There's nothing but a trail. Nothing at all. So cool. This is so pretty. Beautiful. She says we have two options to take on <laughs> on this. The trail or the creek bed. Can't get lost either way. <sighs> you might. So eventually, it looks like all of these rocks just got pressured out of the ground and then they popped up into these shapes. Like eventually the pressure just pushes them straight out into it, the whatever shape they were in. Is so, that your professional opinion? I think so. I mean, that's my observation as a hypothesis, I guess. Look, underneath this whole layer, there's another layer doing the same thing. That's cool. news we're sharing the trail with an animal I don't think that's a cow what else could it be you don't think it's a cow I don't think it's a cow I think it's a cow it's not a cow where would a cow come from there's not a cow out here it wouldn't be roaming around by itself what animal poops like that what is it what are we sharing the trail with right now cows poop like that so it's got these two and then something, it looks like something back here, maybe back there. Or that was just its next footprint. Let's we'll see if we can find a, a different one that's not messed up. Perfect, look, I found a perfect one. It's that. Okay, weigh in. What kind of animal is this? Okay, so we're in the middle of the desert. And we're about to do something that we've never done before. What could it be? The desert. New experience. Obviously, we're going to... Soak in some hot springs. What? That's right. Truth or consequences is a surprising town. Yeah, there are multiple hot springs here. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to one in specific called Riverbend. I think it's a hotel as well. Yep. Um, you can stay here. Um, and the town actually used to be called Hot Springs. Yeah. Uh, New Mexico. Hot so, Springs, New Mexico. Fun fact, there's lots of soaking to be done here. So there are like five different pools. And you have to be quiet. Because this is a relaxation zone. Um, so there are like five different pools and they're all different temperatures. So we're in like the middle of the ground right now. And it's... But we'll probably go to the more warm pool here and just... being healed by the second. How this is the first time you soak, I have no idea. I have a feeling this is just like a thing that people do and we're just now awakening to it. Now I don't have to wash my hair for another week. She's being serious. <laughs> Oh, 
Okay, we have really enjoyed our time here in New Mexico. Uh, really unexpected the amount of time that we spent here um, after the Harvest Host in Las Cruces and then here. So we are at um, a campground called South Monticello at Elephant Butte State Park. And it is beautiful. I mean, you just look all around. You have 360 views of mountains. There's a lake over here that we have backed into the view. Um, and that's just what we've been able to look at for the past uh, three days. So we, uh, we really enjoyed it. It's, it's, it's just a little gym that it's super quiet out here. I mean, you're not close to any city. Um, the moon is extremely bright at night. Uh, the people are just out here enjoying their time. Um, and honestly, like when you talk, you feel like you feel like you could be disturbing the peace because it's just so nice and quiet and peaceful here. So really, really have enjoyed it. Uh, but we have hitched up early and decided to uh, say goodbye to New Mexico for now. And uh, we'll see you next week in Arizona.